Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Now I'm very excited. Chandler's BMW and Halsham have given me the key to the most advanced 3 Series the company currently makes. And I get it for the weekend, so let's have a look. I can't see anything around, but let's unlock it. Um, that looks like a normal 3 Series. Don't get me wrong, I love the 3, but it doesn't look that advanced. Uh, I'm going to have to go back inside because I think they've actually given me the wrong key. Well, I said it's this car here. The new 330e from BMW. This is the most advanced car the company currently makes in the 3 Series lineup. But I need to have a look around and try and see what makes this car so special. And I can see something's plugged in. It's like a kettle. You just plug it into the mains or a special charging station um pretty good looking car to be honest but i can't see anything special about it i think everything will become clear once we're we're out on the road so i've been told you unlock it you pull out this special plug you hang it up and that that's it, so let's get inside. Maybe there's some sort of advanced tech inside. Maybe it's gonna be like Blade Runner with lights flashing everywhere inside. Let's hop in. Now we're on the move, let's have a chat about what is a PHEV and why would you consider getting one? We'll start with the basics. A PHEV has a traditional petrol engine up front and an electric motor at the back. And through some clever wizardry by the engineers at BMW, it combines both electric and petrol to give you the most efficient driving experience possible. We're going to start off with the standard hybrid. So we've got a button down on the centre console here that I can press, so if I press hybrid. Now this has gone over to using the clever part of the car and using the sat nav the car will work out, is it better to be in just electric, just petrol, or even both? Now that's the simplest mode that you can possibly be in. You can then go over to just using electric. There's a electric button just down here next to it. So if I press that, the dials and displays change and I'm purely in electric mode. Now this mode is probably best if you're in a town, maybe low congestion area such as in London, because you don't pay the congestion charge. The other brilliant thing is when you're crawling along in traffic, you don't want all those horrible fumes being pumped out into the environment, and you just crawl along using purely the electric motor. We can then go over to Sport. Now it's not a one trick pony this car, it's not just about being green. The sports mode, this is just as clever as the other modes. Now we've got up front a 2 litre 16 valve turbocharged engine, so we're putting out around 180, 190 brake horsepower. I'll put the figures up if I've got them wrong. Now the electric motor does something very clever. When the turbo is spooling up, there's a lack of power until it gets going. But the electric motor torque fills, so you get less lag. So it gives you a smoother acceleration, which is very, very clever. Now the 0 to 60 time in this, when you've got everything in maximum attack mode, is 5.9 seconds. And that's pretty impressive. The 330, 
standard petrol has got, I think it's only about 0.2 quicker. The thing that's fantastic about this 330E is it feels, it looks, it behaves and drives like any other 3 Series. And that's got to be a good thing. This 3 Series is brand new from the ground up. Everything about it has been redesigned. It's more comfortable, there's more legroom, the technology is better. I personally think it looks better. Just all of the benefits that BMW have put into their latest vehicles, you've got here. So you might have something that is incredibly advanced, but it doesn't feel it. I know that sounds a strange way to be, but if you can save money, have good performance, be better for the environment, that can only be a good thing. The one downside, which is not exactly major, you've got a slightly smaller boat. It's 370 litres. I think you lose about 100 litres because the batteries have got to be stored somewhere along with the electric motor. And also it's slightly heavier. It's 200 kilos more than a regular petrol engine but they've done a good job it doesn't feel much heavier bmw have always been about the ultimate driving machine and i was a bit concerned that all of that extra weight bolted into the car was going to really affect the handling but it doesn't seem to have done that much not on the open road maybe on a track you probably would feel that extra weight but for everyday driving it's pretty much perfect. So the 330E comes with quite a lot of kit as standard. There are many, many tick boxes you can click on the configurator if you want to spend even more amounts of money, but as standard, it comes with quite a lot. So this model, we've got forward facing radar for parking, rear facing camera, We've got auto parking, so if you've got a bit of parallel parking that you need to do, you can press a button and it does it automatically. We've got reverse assist. Now this is a nice little feature. If you could imagine going down maybe a small twisty lane and then you need to reverse back out, you can put it in reverse, press the button, and it will automatically replay the past 100 meters of driving. Now that is very, very useful, very clever bit of tech. iDrive version seven is brilliant. We've got the new layout as well for the main instrument binnacle, completely digital in this version. The iDrive version seven, I'd say, has got to be the best infotainment system I've used on any car at the moment. It is very well laid out. It's just very intuitive. And the great thing is we've still got physical buttons. We've got the traditional iDrive jog wheel down here on the left hand side, or it is touchscreen. So whichever option you want to go for. In front of me as well, we've got everything very clearly laid out. So you've got the sat nav in the middle, acceleration speed on the left, and a few other trip computer on the right. So I've got a couple of examples which I think prove the point of why a PHEV would be a good thing for you. Now, the car itself has got a range of around 35 miles on pure electric. So I can imagine if you've got a shortish journey to work, maybe 15 miles each way, you'd get up in the morning, you can precondition the car so that will mean it's plugged into the mains at your house, press a app on your phone, and that will turn the heating on, the heated seats, get the car nice and toasty without using any of your battery, just uses the mains, unplug it, drive to work, do your day's work, drive home, and plug it back into the mains again to charge overnight. In that way, you're not going to need to visit the petrol station at any point during the week. 
which I think is an absolutely fantastic thing. Now, something people worry about is the cost of doing so, and you're looking around, I think BMW quite about one pound five pence to give you 35 miles of range. So another great example of where a hybrid comes into its own would be as if you're driving into a city. You can set a target rate for the battery, so you'd press the electrical button, set target rate, and this will set the state of charge maintained automatically by the battery. So you can say, I'm driving from outside of London into the city, and I want 100% charge by the time I get there. You'd change some settings, and the car would know to charge the battery to be 100% by the time you get there. Arrive in London, press your electric button, you drive around all green and lovely, no congestion charge. You leave the city, go back into hybrid mode, and the car returns into its normal state. I think that is very clever. It's great for the environment, and also it's uh, very good for your pocket as well. So we've done the pet shop, we're going to head back, go and have a cup of tea. You can have a biscuit or something. Um, and plug it into charge, that's something with PHEVs. When you get the opportunity to, plug it in. A lot of supermarkets and car parks, they have special charging bays you can pop your car into while you're doing your shopping and just get a bit of extra power into the batteries. It's, it's a perfect chance just to get a bit more power in there. Some places are free, other places you have to be part of a scheme, but they're not exactly expensive. So now we're back we can put the car on charge and this is where the plug-in hybrid part comes in. So you get a special charging kit for use at home and we'll take that out. You can get fast chargers for home I think they're around six or seven hundred pounds, but at the moment, I do believe BMW are giving those away for free if you buy a new one, which is brilliant. So open it up as you would do normally, put it in, and that's it. That's gonna charge. A full charge is around seven or eight hours on this normal plug and two and a half, three hours on the fast charger. So leaving this overnight is not exactly a problem. Very, very simple to do. So I'm hoping you can see that this PHEV version of the 3 Series has got a lot of technology underneath the skin, but the BMW engineers have made it as simple as possible for you to use. You don't need a degree in rocket science in order to drive it. It's a three series, you put your foot down and it goes. And on that note guys, I'm going to call this video to a close. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Hopefully it's been interesting as well as exciting. If you've got any questions, just put in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. A massive thank you to Chandler's BMW for allowing me to have the car for a few days. It's been very interesting for me, as uh, hopefully as well as you. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.